All right, so uh, today we're going to uh, enter into chapter six, okay? And here we talk about probability distributions, okay? And so um, let me just kind of give you some context as to why, why we bother even learning about probability and probability distributions. So um, again, the, kind of the big idea of statistics, okay, is that we want to eventually be able to make conclusions about the population based on a sample of data, okay? And so uh, the first chunk of our course focused on how do we describe a sample of data, okay? So, uh, you know, up through midterm one, midterm one was all about describing a sample of data. So we covered descriptive statistics, numeric summaries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. summaries, which are, I guess are descriptive statistics, and even um, descriptive statistics for two variables together, right? And that was uh, linear regression, right? So uh, describing a sample with two variables, two numeric variables. Okay, and so that was, that was kind of the first chunk of our course being able to describe a sample of data, okay? All right. And then, so if we want to head to this idea of making conclusions about the population, okay, what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is, uh, what we're, uh, we are going to compare what we see in a sample of data versus kind of what theory says we should see. And that's why we study probability, okay? And so chapter five and chapter six, and, uh, and the next chapter, this is all about probability. So we had uh, probability rules, okay? So chapter five was kind of rules of probability, and then chapter six will be probability distributions. And this tells us kind of what, under theoretical cases, what our data should look like, okay? So this kind of tells us, um, and I guess chapter seven will be on sampling distributions, but this tells us what our data should look like based on theory. Quote, unquote, should look like based on theory, okay? So this is kind of going to be the, uh, the subject contents of the second midterm. And then, um, and then we bring these together and we compare, you know, now that we can describe a sample of data and we have an idea of what data should look like, what a sample should look like under theory, we can compare the two and say, oh, does kind of, does our data fit the theory? Does our data fit, or our, does the theory that we have fit the data? Okay. And this is, that's statistical inference. Okay. Do our data fit our theory, okay, and essentially, basically, you know, under theoretical conditions, we should see this, does our data contradict that, right? So, you know, what kind of conclusions can we make about the population? Okay. 
So these are kind of like the, uh, the broad themes of our course. We start off learning how to describe data or describe a sample of data. We're going to focus on learning some of the rules of probability, okay, and probability distributions, and then, and then we're going to compare those two for statistical inference, okay? So, you know, last week we covered, you know, the rules of probability and all of that, and now we're going to cover um, probability distributions. Okay, so what is a probability distribution? A probability distribution okay, is a, uh, we can, I guess the mathematical term would be a function, but we can just say a curve that tells us how likely or unlikely certain values are um, according to a theoretical distribution. Okay, so for example, I'm going to just have this normal distribution looking thing, okay, unimodal and symmetric. And, uh, and in the center, I could put in the value 100, okay? And so at 100, this is kind of the peak of our curve, okay? And what this tells us is that values of 100 are the most common values, okay? Uh, appear most frequently. <coughs> All right, and then, you know, over here we could have, let's say this is at 120, okay? So again, the, uh, you know, the height of the curve represents the uh, kind of the, it's actually called the density, but Basically, we could think of it as the frequency, okay? But the mathematical term, we, we call it a density. And, uh, and so at 120, we see um, the height here is about half as high. And so this says um, values of 120 are about half as common as values of 100. And then, you know, technically this curve, you know, is asymptotic to the, uh, the, uh, the x-axis, okay? And then so we see, you know, values out here, this might be 160 or something like that, values of 160 are very uncommon. And so that's, uh, that's kind of what, what we're getting at, okay? And, uh, and one thing to note is that uh, the total area under any given curve is 100%, okay? So if we were to shade everything underneath the curve, the total area under the curve is equal to one, you know, or we could say 100%. Okay, so the total area under the curve is one. So far so good? Okay, and so, you know, in, in this class we're gonna focus mostly on, excuse me, the, um, the normal distribution, but we will encounter, uh, you know, you might encounter a distribution that we call the, uh, the uniform, and, and if you were to take uh, additional classes on probability, 
uh, you will encounter many, many other distributions, okay? Okay, and so the, uh, let me kind of, So the uh, uniform distribution looks kind of like this. So. All right, and, and so what does this tell us in terms of uh, how, uh, how common or uncommon certain <coughs> values are? So this is the uniform distribution. So what does this tell us? This tells us that all values between 0 and 1 are equally common. OK, so all values between 0 and 1 OK, and, uh, and all other values uh, don't exist, okay? And uh, and we do not see values greater than one or less than zero. Okay. Is that okay? So if I draw a line at uh, point five, uh, this is supposed to be halfway. Where is that? Right there. OK. So if I draw a line at point 5, and, uh, and I shade everything to the left of point 5, how much will I have shaded? This is not a trick question. I, I would have shaded point 5, right? 50%, OK? And so this indicates that the probability that, um, you know, of drawing a number less than 0.5 is 0.5, right? So the probability drawing a value less than 0.5 is what happened with probability 0.5, OK? All right, what if I? Uh, Go to point six and point eight. How much? What's the probability of drawing a value between point six and point eight? tell me the answer is 0.2, right? OK, and because we know that the total area has to be 1. And so this, this covers kind of 20% of that area, so we got 0.2 right there. Is this OK? So this is kind of the general idea of probability distributions, OK? Um, what we are going to look at is uh, we're going to look at the normal distribution. Okay, and so the normal distribution looks something like this. Okay. I'm going to pretend like this is symmetric. Okay, and uh, and let me start off with the uh, the standard normal. Okay, so the standard normal is uh, what your um, paper reference table is. So oh, okay, so let me just say something about this reference table. Uh, this is yours to keep. Uh, it's your responsibility to uh, to bring this to class. Um, so you'll need, uh, for like quizzes and section and stuff, you'll need to have your own copy 
of, a re uh, of this reference table. So if you lose it or misplace it, um, I'll have a copy online that you can print out yourself, okay? So if you, uh, if you lose this, it's your responsibility to print one out and bring it to, uh, to class and to section. Um, as far as uh, like the midterm and the final goes, I will, I will provide uh, a reference table as part of the, uh, the exam, okay? All right, and so with the, uh, the standard normal distribution, um, what we do is in, the, uh, in this center, we put the value zero. So the standard normal has a mean equal to zero, okay? And for probability distributions, because it's a theoretical thing, uh, we're going to use the, uh, the Greek letter mu rather than x bar, okay? So we have a mean equal to zero and a standard deviation equal to one, and we, we use the, uh, the Greek letter sigma for that. Okay, and so, um, so I, you know, again, this will be the easy question is, uh, if I shade everything to the left of zero, how much have I shaded? And you guys tell me, 0.5, right? Okay. All right. Let's say I go just uh, ever so slightly to, um, uh, let me just scale this down a little bit, okay? Let, so this is the uh, same standard normal distribution, okay? Uh, in the center, I still have zero, but let's say I just go uh, a little bit over to the right to um, 0.08. Okay, and then now I shade everything to the left of 0 0.08. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Um, okay, well, how do I, how do I paint this in? <laughs> so now I'm shading everything over to the left of 0 0.08. I don't know what happened, I don't know why. Okay. So how much will I have shaded over here? So here now we go to uh, we go to the table, and we're going to um, we're going to go look in the row 0, 0.0. Okay, and in the top left corner we see 0. 0.500. Okay, we see uh, we see that if we draw a line at 0, 0.00. Uh, the amount I have shaded in the upper left-hand corner of the table is 0.5, okay? And that's, that's what matches our diagram here. Um, if I draw a line at 0 0.08, okay, I would go to the column 0, 0.8. I stay in the row 0.0 because I'm at 0 0.08, and the amount I have shaded now is 0.5319, and so this would be 0.5319. Nine. Is that, is that good with everybody? Yes? Okay. All right, so, and if I have a point five three one nine shaded over here, uh, and I want to know um, what's going on. Um, okay. And if I want to shade everything over on this side, so assuming my shading is good, um, how much is shaded in green? So orange is 0 0.5319, and green would be 0 .5319. What, what, what would I do? I would subtract this from 1, right? So this, this side is going to be 1 minus 0 0.5319, which gives me 0 0.4681. Um, let's 
get this. Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.5319 is 0 0.4681. Okay. So I'm hoping that's good with everybody also. Okay. Well, great. So, so with the, uh, the normal table, just keep in mind the table will always give you the area to the left of your cutoff. Okay, and then we, uh, we call the cutoff Z. Okay, so the table will always give you the area to the left of your cutoff. Now, because the table is symmetric, the area to the right of some cutoff is equal to the area to the left of the negative Z. Okay, so just uh, because it's symmetric, The area to the right of some value z is equal to the area to the left of negative z. Okay, and so I can illustrate this. So we had um, in the previous example we said if I draw a line at point zero eight the amount I have shaded to the right, I have 0 0.5319, and over here I have 0 0.4681, okay? So if I wanted the area to the right of 0 0.08, of z equal to 0 0.08 is 0 0.4681, okay? And we found that by doing one minus area to the left of 0 0.08, right? And that was 1 minus 0.5319. Just, this is just a recap of what we did on the previous slide, okay? Well, so one way to do it is to look up 0 0.08, find the area to the left, and do 1 minus that, okay? A little, um, a mental shortcut, if you want to use it, and you, nobody says you have to use shortcuts if you don't like them, okay? is that we could look up negative 0 0.08, okay? And the area to the left of negative 0 0.08, this area, if you look that up, is gonna be 0 0.4681. So the area to the left, which is, the table always gives you the area to the left, so you just look up area to the left of z equal to negative 0 0.08 is 0 0.4681, okay? And so, so that's just a handy little, uh, handy little trick, okay? And uh, I give you both sides of the positive and negative table, but truth is, is you only really need one side of the Z table because, because it is symmetric, okay? But, you know, a lot of times it's just easy to look up the value you want, not have to worry about adding or subtracting things from one. Okay? And, you know, if you're not comfortable with this uh, little bit of, uh, um, you know, symmetry stuff and, and things like that, some, some of us are not as visual as others, so picturing this is a little bit tougher. Nobody's going to force you to use the, uh, the shortcut, okay? We, you, can, uh, you can always look up positive 0 0.08, find the area to the left, and say, well, I want the area to the right, so I'm going to do 1 minus the area to the left, and that will always give you the correct answer as well. Is that good? Okay, so we'll just do a, a, a quick uh, practice problem here. And, uh, and it sh let, me, um, let me make up some uh, answer choices here. Okay. Um,
Why is it doing this? Is there like a little gap there? Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna say how much is shaded? Okay, so go ahead. Oh, I gotta, sorry, I gotta fire up the clicker software. Give me a second. Okay, so go ahead and uh, look that up. So how much is shaded? Okay, you can you can talk to your neighbors if you wish. Okay, just uh, just a few more seconds here. Looks like uh, most of you guys got your clicks in. Okay, three, two, one. All right. Okay, and uh, and A is indeed the uh, the correct answer. All right. So uh, those of you who uh, who missed. Okay, so. What we want to do is uh, we're going to go to the table, and we have a few options, okay? One is we could look up negative, so let me, uh, let me shrink this a little bit. So one option is we look up negative 1.0, and we go to the column 0 0.04, because our value is negative 1.04. Some of you, uh, these, the, the wrong answers here, this corresponds to uh, um, negative 1.4 or, uh, I don't know, positive 1.4, you know, whatever. Um, so these ones correspond to uh, 1.4, okay? Okay, so if you look up negative 1.04, you find uh, 0.1492, I believe, okay? And so we get the area over here, this area, because the table gives, always gives us the area to the left. We get the area to the left of negative 1.04 to be 0.1492, okay? And we know this can't be our answer, okay? Because when we look at the picture, it's very clear to us that, or it should be clear, that we have shaded over half of the total area, right? So we know, just from looking at the picture, we know that our answer has to be over one half, okay? So from the picture, we know the area must be greater than a half because we've shaded more than half of it, okay? And so if, we've, if we write down that our answer is 0.1492, that should tip us off that, oh, something, something is not quite right, okay? And so to get the area to the right, we would do 1 minus 0.1492, and we get 0.8508, okay? The other option is, uh, you know, you could just say, well, the area to the right of negative 1.04 is the area to the left of positive 1.04, okay? And so you could look up 1.0 and 0.04, and you'd get 0.8508 as your answer as well. So, because the table will always give you the area to the left. So, you, if you can keep track of 
you know, whether you want the area to the right or the area to the left, you can, uh, you can get your answers this way. Okay? Just, just want to make sure we're okay with that. All right? So we have, um, we have that. And then, um, well, let's, let's try this out, okay? So I'm going to say uh, the shaded area okay. the shaded area equals 0 0.025. Okay? And I'm going to ask where's the cutoff Z? And so you'll have some answer choices here. Okay, just, uh, just a few more seconds. We'll close it at oh, one minute. So three, two, one here. Okay, I'm going to hit stop. Okay, and, uh, and you guys all got this, all right? Uh, a few of you guys missed. Um, so what we are looking for is we want, we want this area piece here. This should be 0 0.025, okay? And so what we do is uh, in the Z table, we are looking for the area that is closest, area closest to 0 0.025, okay? And, uh, and we find uh -huh, uh, 0 0.0250, so that's, that's nice, okay? And that is in the row negative 1.9 and the column 0 0.06, okay? All right, and so that tells us that the cutoff that we drew was at negative 1.96. Okay, so Z here is at negative 1.96. If I draw a cutoff there, then my shaded area to the left is going to be 0 0.025. Okay, so, uh, you know, just a quick check of your understanding. I'm not going to make a clicker question out of this, but if I have... Um, if I say this shaded area is 0 0.025, where is my cutoff here? Yeah, this here is going to be z is equal to positive 1.96, right? Okay. So do you guys remember the uh, empirical rule? Yeah, okay, well, and what did we say in the empirical rule? Mm 
maybe we kind of remember it. Empirical rule, there was the uh, 68, 95, 99.7 rule, kind of. And we said this was one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations of the mean. Okay. So effectively, if I want to cover the middle 95% here, I'm going to have 0 0.025 in this tail and 0 0.025 in this tail, right? Just want to make sure that picture is okay with everybody. All right. And so from the normal distribution, we would see that our cutoffs would actually be at Z is at negative 1.96 and Z is at positive 1.96. Okay. And so that's how we're getting this value about 95% within two standard deviations. It's, a, it's the, if we want to be more accurate, we would say 95% at 1.96 standard deviations. But we say 1.96, two standard deviations, yeah, there's, there's a pretty close, okay? Because so, these are rules of thumb, okay? But that's, that's where we are getting these values. Okay, we're saying, you know, uh, from the normal distribution, and you could verify the other ones. If you went down one standard deviation and one standard deviation above, you would get a little bit more than 68% and, and things like that. So from the normal distribution, okay, drawing cutoffs at negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 will uh, encompass the middle 95 percent. of the distribution. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, we'll expand on this, uh, but so here we've been dealing with the, uh, the standard normal distribution. We can turn, um, we can take anything and we can say, uh, take any measurement and we can, if we turn it into a z-score, we can uh, answer questions about the, uh, the values here, okay? So, uh, for example, so let me just say, uh, so we can take any value any value from any normal distribution and uh, we can standardize it by using by using z scores okay and so so for example let's say um, we were looking at tigers, okay? And, um, and I think uh, if we look at male tigers, the, uh, the weight, male tiger weight follows, we can assume uh, a normal distribution. Okay, so this squiggle means comes from a normal distribution. And we'll say that the mean is uh, 490 pounds and the standard deviation is, uh, we'll say, 42 pounds. Okay, I'm, I'm making up some of these numbers, but I think the, uh, this is kind of in the realm of reality. <laughs> um, anybody see The Jungle Book? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah? It, w w it was great? You loved it. Okay, well, it's on my to-do list. Um, after I purchased Beyonce's album, so. Um, all right, so let's say uh, we can ask, you know, what percent of tigers weigh less than, uh, we'll say, 520 pounds? Okay. Well, if we, um, if we draw a picture Okay, we're going to put in the middle 
490, and I'm going to draw a cutoff at 520. And what I want to know is how much is shaded over here. Okay, this is basically what I want to know. What percentage of tigers weigh less than 520? Okay, and so in order to answer this, I'm going to uh, turn the 520 into a z-score. So that's going to be z is 520 minus 490 divided by 42. Okay, so what is that? 520 minus 490 divided by 42. I get a z-score of 0.714, so I'm just going to round off to 0.71, okay? So this 520 is equivalent to z equal to 0.71, okay? And so at this point, I can just look in my table, and when I look up z is equal to 0.71, I go to the row 0.7 and the column 0.01, the value I find there is 0.7611. And that is the area over here, 0.7611. And that's going to be my answer. My answer, what percentage of tigers weigh less than 520 pounds? I'm going to say 76.11%. Is that okay? All right, so we'll, uh, we'll end there. We'll, uh, we'll talk more about this on, uh, on Friday. So uh, we'll see, see you guys then.